It came with a stock that you attach to the back of the gun that really turns the gun into what I would call a rifle, which makes the gun shootable and more accurate. How much did he pay? $32,500. One gun? One gun. Was that cash he just had? He didn't care. He was going to buy that gun. That was a clip from tonight's all-new Strange Inheritance right here on the Fox Business Network. Host Jamie Colby set out for Garden Grove, California, where one strange inheritance was built on firearms. Jamie joins us right now with more on that. That was so interesting. <laughs> what kind of insight did you get about these guns? That 32500 was a great investment because we could all retire on what that gun is worth. Wow. Very interesting story about Mel Guy, who served in the Navy, came out and decided he wanted every cult single action. You'll learn what that is tonight. I didn't know. Um, well, I probably shouldn't tell you that because I should know. But <laughs> in any event, wait till you see it in my hands. Um, I won, and you should see the other guy. It's an incredible <laughs> collection of cults. It's a great story, a great American story of a man who just was obsessed. And now his daughter's having a really hard time parting with the collection because, as she says, every time she sells a gun, she loses a piece of her father. Mm -hmm. But those belong out in circulation, other collectors to appreciate it. And that's what our show tries to do. Let people know what's out there so you could start your yeah. own collection and retire. It's got to be a lot, right? 30 grand. I mean, I, mean, I don't know what other collectible guns would, would go for. But what's excuse the, excuse what's the ignorance, but... You know, it's a nice price, but uh, some are worth more. This one okay. is just extremely unique. It's the, it's the cult. It, it's the one that they say won the West. And if you ever watched, you know, any of the others or you knew Wyatt Earp or any of right. these other people, you're going to get a history lesson in, in Westerns tonight. And so you shot cool. it yourself. I might have. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good tease. You, yeah. you went to Hastings on Hudson in New York. Uh, by the way, I love that town. I didn't have uh, to go far. Yeah, I, but for once. one strange inheritance is built on uh, percussion gongs mm -hmm. that belong to the famed opera composer Giacomo Puccini. Watch this. They're very special, and I'll show you why. I'm going to play first a regular gong, which sounds pretty good, and this is on stage all the time. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, pretty good to but me. But here is Puccini gongs. Wow. How did, how did a regular do? gong and a Puccini gong. Wow. Oh, there's so much more to this story. I have to tell you, first of all, the Puccini gongs were designed by Puccini. He wrote La Boheme and Madame Butterfly and my favorite opera, Tosca, which is a hilarious oh uh, um, opera. But he didn't get to finish Turned Out, one of his well-known operas, because he passed away. He designed those gongs for the ending. A woman checks three guys out, and they have to answer questions. And the one who doesn't answer them right gets their head chopped off. That's the opera. <laughs> The gongs play a really important role, probably not for the guy who wins. Anyway, they ended up in a warehouse in Queens. Her husband, who was, her name's Marlene Petoro, her husband, who she loves so much, Howard. Puccini gongs ended up in a warehouse in Queens. Where else? Something to do with winning a card game. And she, her husband buys them. He was affiliated with Juilliard and the New York Opera. And, and now Marlene is tasked by her husband, big job, to help write a new ending for Turn Dot because it was never finished. She's got the key, those gongs. That's tonight on Strange and Heroes. That is great. <laughs> what a great story. Anywhere else, Maria. I can't wait to watch. How many great stories does Jamie yeah. bring us? Amazing. Check out Strange and Heroes tonight on the Fox Business Network, 9 p.m. Eastern. Be there.